Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to the fish room and to a part two of guppy line breeding. Uh, so if you haven't seen the video before this, uh, the intro or the part one, check it out in that card above. Uh, but today we're going to go a little bit further in depth on actually uh, separating the guppies. You want to do it around two months, three months is almost a little bit too late. And we'll take a close look at these guys we have in the container here. Uh, well, I'm getting pretty close to that point where it's kind of um, at the point of no return where you're not going to really have uh, specifically male to female, uh, you might get more of that colony breeding. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these guppies. We'll kind of identify uh, male from female, things we're looking for, things we want to kind of uh, separate from our groups, or like our breeding program. You can call it whatever you want to do. Uh, whenever you get a little bit more serious, you want to breed guppies, any type of fish, any type of animal, uh, you do have to have certain steps that you follow, things that you're going after, uh, things you're trying to eliminate. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's dive into it, we'll take a closer look at these guppies, uh, things that I like, I don't like, and just identifying from male to female. So here are the guppies that we're working with for this project, and I think this is pretty cool because we're just using a nice looking female guppy from my uh, colony tank. Uh, this is just an assortment of guppies, I don't really have any breeding prog programs with them, uh, I just have guppies I breed and then anything that comes out that's not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, not that it's good or bad, but you may just have some colorations that look really cool, but you're not really trying to produce that. I kind of just have a mixed tank, um, so kind of a bunch of mutt guppies, but I think they look really cool. Uh, so I pulled a female out from there, and we're kind of just starting from scratch. So I think that's pretty cool where anybody can do this. You can go buy a pair of guppies from the pet store, um, whatever you'd like to do, and kind of just start where we are right now and do your own guppy line breeding. Uh, so things that we'll take a closer look at is just obviously male and female. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and point out a few things that I want to get rid of uh, just because my eyes always kind of draw to it right away. So I have a little laser pointer here. Um, this guppy, they might chase him, I know where. You can see this guy uh, to, over to the back right by himself. Uh, you can see just the back of the fish. Things you want to look for, you need to train yourself for. Um, that would be a call that's not a fish I want to reproduce or grow up and breed with my other fish. Whenever it's a female, it's not that big of a deal if you do it later on, but you do not want to have a uh, male guppy breeding with all your females that has uh, any problems with it. Another thing I can see right here is this guppy uh, over here, this female. Uh, whenever she was swimming before, she actually looked really good, um, but she's got like a clamp fin on the back. Uh, sometimes it's an illness, but to me it looks like just a deformity in her tail. Uh, so that's all those things that are kind of negatives you want to point out. You want to just find anything visually that, yeah, it doesn't really look right. Or after that step, um, you want to separate males and females, which we will do, uh, but once they get a little bit bigger and they're not already breeding, you have males and females, then you want to start looking for color, certain traits like that. Uh, one last thing, and these are just a couple things off the top of my head, uh, you want to look for any deformities in their tails, their backs, uh, you want to look from above, look from the side, uh, you want to make sure their belly's not bulging out, you also want to look for any runts. Uh, just looking through here, there may be two or three in there, they're just a little bit smaller than the rest of them. And that's kind of a red flag right there. Maybe nothing wrong with that fish, but you're not gonna have kind of all the studs or the strongest fish of your strain. Uh, so you wanna pick the best of the best every time if possible, and just kind of work your way in a certain direction where you're trying to get better over time. Getting a little bit closer here, we might lose a little focus in and out, um, but just looking for males and females. The one in the front left, uh, bottom left corner, you can tell is obviously a male from its coloration. It's kind of uh, maturing a little bit faster. But if you look close underneath, it's called a gonoponium. He's right in the middle of the screen now. Uh, their bottom, uh, by the way, like their anal fin, like this one here, I'm pointing out the laser, you can see he's turning right. Underneath, you can see their fin goes into more of a point. And when they get a little bit older, they're just starting to do it now. So this is a kind of the perfect time, if not almost too late to start separating these guys. Um, that's when they're gonna start breeding. Before they actually have any movement in their fin there, um, they're not even gonna attempt to breed. The females are still a little bit too young. Um, but that's something where it's kind of a tail sign for any live bear. Once they get that gonoponium, and it kind of goes to a, it points off in the back, uh, and they'll have two fins. One will be round and the one behind it is going to be pointed. Um, that's still a male. Females are going to have two fins down there, and they're both going to be more rounded off. Uh, so females will not have a pointed fin. It gets a little bit more difficult when you have things with their, like a sail fin, their, their fins are longer. Uh, but the male will always have that gonoponium. Um, that's what you look for. And then for the females, actually the one that we don't really like, it's back fin. Uh, she's a good example. Uh, this one down here, you see, right, she's kind of wiggling. She's definitely struggling to swim, um, which is a shame, but whenever you're breeding fish, uh, 
you're gonna have some calls. Fish are gonna have to separate from your breeding tanks, whether you just keep them in their own tank or you kind of, uh, whatever you wanna do when you call your fish, you may have a larger uh, tank where they eat the baby fish, things like that. You can put them back in there. And that's kind of just a circle of life. All in all, we wanna improve this strain of fish and just the fish health in general. Um, I feel bad for that fish that's not swimming so well, um, but I would feel even worse if she had babies and now I have 30 fish that are like that. So I'm really looking out for the tank as a whole and for the fish. I don't wanna have any more uh, sick fish. So I wanna make them healthier and happier over time. Um, but getting back to what I was saying with the females, uh, they'll get a gravid spot or like an egg spot uh, where you can see she is just, I, my eyes are drawn to her, but you can see her eye there and then back there, that dark spot next to my finger. Um, that's going to be a female for sure. Males will not get that spot there. Uh, these guppies aren't that colorful yet because they're still young and guppies are a little bit easier to tell. If you have like a black molly, it's going to be a little bit harder, but they're a bigger fish, so it's a lot easier to see that um, gonoponium or the rounded fin for a male to female. Uh, but when you have the smaller guppies, you're looking for the male for that pointed fin. Females, you're looking for the rounded fin and also that egg spot. Um, that's also a good sign whenever a guppy's starting to get more and more fat, whenever they are breeding and they're having babies, uh, which some of those females in there, I'm gonna keep a close eye on them. Uh, once we separate them, make sure that they never have babies that they haven't already been bred with, because uh, they're getting close to that point. Ideally, you wanna separate them uh, when you have some guppies like this smaller one right there. Uh, you can separate them, kind of guessing male to female, looking for that egg spot, and then have your males there for sure. They look like a male. And just kind of watch them over the period of weeks. You always can move them back and forth. Um, but if you get an early head start on that and you have two tanks that are kind of, we'll show you my setup in a minute here where we have 10 tanks, uh, two 10 gallon tanks, uh, one male, one female. We're gonna separate these guys now and we'll show you that. We'll make any calls we have to. Um, but things right now, and I know I'm kind of going on, but this is all very important because this is day one. It takes you 10 minutes or so. It may take you a little bit longer if you have to catch a fish out of like a planted tank. Um, this is kind of the foundation of our entire uh, line breeding that's going to go on for months and months. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to pull out any of the females that we've already talked about or just any of the guppies. I'm also going to remove any of the smaller ones. So me personally, like these guppies up front, these two slightly smaller ones, that one there and this one here, nothing wrong with those fish. They look fine. They're probably going to have nice colors, grow up to be good. Um, but those fish I'm going to separate from this because they will breed and they'll have nice babies, but it's not gonna be the best of what I'm working with. Uh, if I had to go from scratch right now and maybe pick a pair or two, uh, just looking at the tank, I do like the male um, back here. Uh, he's got nice tail, it's not crooked or anything. He's good colors. Uh, he's pretty vibrant, he looks healthy the way he's swimming. Um, so that'd be one male I'd be picking out. The other is kind of a, a tie. Uh, either one of these two here, um, this male here, or this male here. Uh, I know they're males because we looked at their fins. We know from their colors kind of standing out. Another thing that almost never happens, but I'm always looking for those bright, colorful fish and making sure that they are a male or a female. Because uh, if you ever get that kind of like, this fish right here almost looks like a female, it's obviously not. But if you start getting females like that, and I did this for a long time and I still do it, uh, you want to start getting nicer and nicer females because the males are usually a little bit easier. Uh, you have to make sure their tails kind of maintain a shape. Um, but they're always going to be pretty colorful for the most part. Uh, females is where it gets pretty exciting in my opinion. Uh, when we're going to go ahead and pick out a female, I'm looking for good body shape, good size, and a little bit of color. Uh, obviously a lot of color, but that's not always going to happen. Um, this one here, first glance, looks like it might be a female, but it's actually a male. Um, but if that was a female, that'd be a good thing to look for. This guppy right here is a female. She's got a little bit of color to her. Uh, her face has a little bit of a crookedness like on the top of her body. Uh, it's not really a deal breaker for me, but that is a female with a little bit of color. So that's something that's kind of catching my eye. Things I'm gonna look for, um, but I'm looking for a nice body shape, especially the way they swim. I'd have to say this one back here, um, that is a female. And she it looks like she has a little bit better body shape to her. Um, and I'm looking at this thing and through the video, so it's a little bit hard for me to kind of uh, talk to you guys and really look at them that closely. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and separate them. Uh, we will grow these guys up and then we'll actually do our actual picks because a lot can change in a month or so with these fish. Uh, some of the males right now might kind of be like a late bloomer uh, where they're going to get a bigger body shape and not develop any color. Uh, like this this one back here. Uh, he's going to be a little bit more of like a beefy fish. You look, he just has a little bit more size to him than the ones that are skinnier with more color. Uh, so that might be a big thing I'm looking for. 
very big variable of um, am I trying to make my fish bigger? Uh, some people are always breeding for colors where you lose track of the size of your fish and they have these giant tails but they can't even hold them. Make sure all around you just have a good looking fish and you're working towards something. And if you have any problems, maybe the next generation is where you fix it and right now you just wanna focus on the color. But I'm not gonna make this video too much longer. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these guys and I'll show you in the tank. I'm not gonna show you one by one, kind of picking them out. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, but I am separating them today. Uh, I should have done it probably two weeks ago, but I still think we're on track time-wise. And I think this will be a really cool series. So make sure you guys follow along. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, so you get updates on this video uh, whenever it comes time to picking out our pairs and breeding these guys because it's not going to be for a few more months from now. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and separate these guys and we'll take a last final look at them before we kind of wrap it up. Okay, so we got them separated. I figured I'd show you while they're in the containers before they go back into the tank because the tank's going to be a little bit too hard to see. Um, little side note too, these fish all came from this tank down here. Uh, this water is the same in both of these, so it's water from that tank. After I finish this, I'll just put all the females back into here. Uh, they don't have to go through any acclimation. Then over in this tank is going to be the male tank. And it's very similar water, but I am going to acclimate them and slowly add water. Um, but it's going to mostly not stress these females out at all. The males will have very little stress, but I am going to acclimate them. Uh, just things to consider whenever you're moving the fish around. Uh, instead of getting like two different tanks of water, uh, know where they're coming from and just don't add any uh, additional stress um, or just net them out and put them right into the tank. Uh, that way you're only doing it once. Don't put them into new water, then back into their old water. Uh, just a little side note, that's not a real big deal. Um, but all in all, I think we have 21 fish. Uh, so I had a little bit of a test for you guys. We have a lot more males and females. I left one male in there, uh, potentially a female. I wanna see if you guys can kind of spot it out. Uh, challenge you guys a little bit, but these are all our males. I think we have 13, it'll be a 14. Uh, once we add the one over, we have five females in there. And we end up getting, I think, three calls, which isn't too bad. I'll probably just put them in a planted tank without I'm not breeding anything. Um, you can do whatever you'd like. That's your own opinion or whatever you want to do there. Um, but there are going to be some calls. Not something people really like to talk about. But it's one of those things, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Once you start doing it, not every fish is going to be perfect. Um, but taking a closer look, these are, and it's surprising how many males we have. Uh, that's another thing too. You may be breeding certain females and some have a lot more males, some have a lot more females. Uh, so those are things you can breed for as well if you want more males or females or if you want a pretty even number. Uh, you also can kind of mess with the temperature a little bit to kind of help that out. Um, but here we have all the males. Uh, but we'll jump over to the female tank. I don't know if it's going to be clear enough for us to even tell through a camera. Uh, but I want you guys to look at these females and guess which one you think is a male and which ones are for sure females. Uh, I know it's a little bit harder to do over camera than in person, but if you guys want to kind of look for a minute, I'll record these guys. I uh, remember the things we talked about before, um, the rounded off fin looking for an egg spot. Uh, so that one right there, good example, is a female, is a female. Keep looking, we got a couple left. Um, and it's still early to tell. They may develop that, they may not develop it. Uh, so looking close through the camera lens, maybe something will stand out to you guys. Um, but some of these, to the untrained eye, or just kind of uh, looking at an adult versus a baby, it's kind of hard to tell what's a male and female. But if you guys haven't got it yet, and I know my camera skills need some work, uh, this one here is potentially a male. See how it spins a little bit more pointed off? But that's not really a tail sign. I can't see any of the egg spot. Um, but it doesn't really look like a male, doesn't really look like a female. So this is kind of one of those things where you're looking at them when they're at a young age, and you can always separate them a little bit early and go back and separate them again. But this one here, uh, I'm saying is gonna potentially be a male. And this is something that is very important that you take a close look at, you double, triple check yourself, you use good lighting, uh, even just over container right now, I'm using one of these little uh, puck lights from my other tanks. I just moved it over temporary so I can kind of take a close look at these guys. Um, but if I get rid of this light and I'm looking at them, it's a totally different story, it's way harder. Um, you can get a few weeks earlier babies just by having good lighting and looking at them closer. Um, but we're going to go ahead and separate that potential male. I think it's this one up here, they're a little bit smaller, uh, over to the male tank. And then we're going to kind of move forward. Uh, we'll have a part three video coming out probably another month or so. Where we're actually going to select our nicest females and males. I'll let you know if anything changes from uh, maybe a few females will develop over here. And it's just a little bit too early to tell. 
Um, but just to let you guys see, um, there he is again right there. He or she uh, might start developing an egg spot and just be a little bit uh, younger or just less mature than the other ones. Um, but also might turn to a male. And this is how you could really, uh, what I was trying to say is run into trouble where you separate these guppies. You're like that's not a male, the fin's not pointed. Um, but then later on it does develop to be a not very colorful male and now it's breeding with all your best females and you kind of just ruined your entire project. Uh, so you're always better off to have definite for sure females and then any questionable guppies, put them with the males. You can always get like a bad looking female or just a late bloomer female. She'll breed with some of the males, but all these ones are clean. You know they haven't bred with all the males. Um, so you always wanna kind of uh, have a male heavy tank, uh, but I'm pretty confident. I think I just had a male heavy uh, batch of babies here where we had about 14 males and only four females that are uh, good and we had those three that we pulled out and i think they're all females two are a little bit too young to really tell um, but just kind of gives you a good idea of separating the fish i hopefully this video is helpful to you guys uh, i know i said it earlier i'm gonna try to make it a little bit shorter i think we're probably going around 15 minutes now i think i had a couple clips in between uh, but thank you all for watching if you like this video like it comment below what you think about the series uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'll post some of the links of my older videos on the screen here. Uh, go ahead and check them out if you'd like. Uh, getting a lot more into the planet aquariums, still working on some guppy strains, and some cool things are coming out in the future. So thanks again for watching, guys. Check out those videos, and I'll talk to you very soon. See ya.